Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss a job order costing or simply a job costing. This topic is covered in managerial accounting, cost accounting, the CPA exam, BEC section, as well as the CMA exam. So you need to be familiar with this topic, whether you are taking those courses or studying for your CPA or CMA exam. In this session, I'll go, I will go over an introductory introduction about job order costing. Whether you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student, I strongly suggest you take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. You keep your CPA review course. I'm a useful addition. I provide alternative explanation, alternative resources for you to succeed on your CPA exam. Your risk to try me is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is passing the exam. Don't shortchange yourself. You study for your CPA exam once in your lifetime. Give me a chance. Give me a month. You like it, you keep it, you don't, you cancel. If not for anything, Take a look at my web on my website to find out how well or not well your university doing for the CPA exam. I do have resources for other college courses, such as managerial accounting, intermediate accounting, governmental tax, so on and so forth. I do have the AI CPA previously released questions for the CPA exam, and my CPA courses are aligned with your review course, such as Wiley, Gleam, Becker, Roger, so on and so forth. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording on YouTube. Subscribe. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's talk about job order costing, or simply put, job costing. In this type of work, the job or the product itself that you are manufacturing is to order. Well, what does it mean it's to order? It means the, the individual, the customer, is asking for some sort of a unique product or individualized product. In other words, you are not processing, you are not manufacturing in a process fashion. What do you mean by process? Let's assume you are selling, you are selling cans of tuna. You may produce thousands, tens of thousands of those all the same and sell them. Well, that's not what you are doing now. When we do process costing, this is when we sell the same items in millions of in millions of uh, quantities. But that's not the case here. Product are individualized, unique. Each order required unique tracing or allocate allocating of cost to each job. So what you need to do. You need to keep track of each for the cost for each job separately as much as you can, especially when it comes to direct material and direct labor. You have to maintain a cost record for each job. What companies use job order costing? Many companies use job order costing. If you go to fix your car at a garage, they keep track of the labor cost, of the product cost that you are using on that car. Then they add a little bit of overhead because the cost composed of direct material, direct labor, and they have to allocate a little bit of overhead to your car. For example, companies like Toll Brothers, they do residential construction. Each home that they build, they would keep track of the direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Netflix, movie production, when they produce various movies, such as Narcos, House of Cards, or F is for Family, now you know my taste for movies, they need to keep track for these individual cost object, each job separately. So whatever cost of actors, actors and actresses they spend on Narcos, they keep separate record for that. Same concept for House of Cards, direct material for, and the same concept for F for family. Then they do the same thing for direct, for direct material, I'm sorry, for direct labor. This is where they incur the actor and actress's cost. They keep track of that. The problem is when it comes to manufacturing overhead, manufacturing overhead cannot be easily traced. Remember, direct material is material that's used for that production. Let's assume they purchased an equipment that's strictly used for narcos, then it becomes direct material for narcos. When they hire actors and actresses for narcos, then those are considered direct labor. But let's assume they transport the the actors and actress from the US, from, from LA to Mexico and they use a, net, 
an airplane owned by Netflix. Then they use this airplane for many other different movies. Well, the airplane usually it's, it's a, becomes a manufacturing overhead cost. How do you allocate the manufacturing over, overhead cost to the various jobs, which is to the various movies? And this is where it comes a little bit more involved. And this is what we'll need to discuss in this course as well as in this chapter. Allocating overhead is the most difficult component than allocating labor and material because remember direct labor it can be easily traced direct labor can be easily traced manufacturing overhead cannot be easily traced now in the real world companies will keep a job cost record or bill of lading for each job separately this is this is basically an excel basic sheet this job cost record could be a fancy software or this is just could be kept track of it on an Excel sheet. You'll have the job order cost, the customer or the product, and you'll have the date, the description, if you have a reference, direct material, how much direct material you consumed, quantity cost total, direct labor, quant uh, hour rate total, and how are you applying the overhead? What basis are you using, which we'll talk about in this session? What's the quantity rate and total? And this is basically a job order cost. Now, again, this is a simple, basic, sheet this could be a fancy software okay uh, now we're going to keep track of, for our purposes to illustrate this whole concept we're going to be working with a company called Pairco job cost sheet we're going to be manufacturing wooden cargo crate uh, the department is v3 the job number is a1134 and the starting date is March the 4th. So notice we have to keep track of direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead, which is basically the same thing as my simple Excel sheet, material, labor and overhead. The point here I'm trying to make is you can keep track of these three items in many different ways, including a computerized fancy system or a cost, a cost sheet just like this one that you're seeing in front of you. And at the end, you'll have a cost summary for each product. So for the sake of, of illustration, remember we are manufacturing just to kind of wooden cargo crate. Therefore, we need some sort of wood. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to first request, okay, material. We're going to fill out a material requisition form asking the, the warehouse to send us because we need to manufacture this wooden cargo, two by four, 12 feet, quantity 12, the cost is $3, $36 worth of those, and one by six, 12 feet, and we need 20 of those at $4, the, the cost, which is $80. Now, w once we request this, now we know that we are going to spend $116 on job number A143, which is the wooden cargo. At this point, this you know, if you have a computerized system, the computerized system will start to populate the job cost sheet for job number A143, or you might have someone, a bookkeeper, a secretary, a manager who's gonna keep track of this. So notice here, what we have is the $116 is transferred to the under direct material for this wooden cargo crate. And notice here cost summary, if that's all what we need, we just summarize it and this is $116. Now we need to send people to work on this wooden cargo crate. Now, well, we're gonna send an employee called I am skilled the time ticket is 36, station 42, they're going to be working on, and they're going to spend from 8 o'clock that day till 16 hours, 1600, which is, they're going to spend 8 hours. The rate for this employee is $15. In other words, we spent $120 on job number A143. That's the only thing that we did. What are we going to do next? We're going to populate our job cost sheet. We're going to take this information here and transfer it to here, direct labor. And this is the only direct labor. We're gonna have a cost summary. Again, I'm showing you a simple example, but in the real world, you could have a lot of direct labor, a lot of direct material, and you need to keep track of this. Again, a computerized system where everything is being tracked automatically is the way to go. For example, in many manufacturing facilities, the employee, if, you're working, if you are working on a specific project, you will scan your ID and it will keep track of your time and that time gets transferred to the job cost sheet. When you need an item, when you need a raw material to add to a product, what's going to happen is you scan that item and the system will automatically add the material to that specific job order. Now, the only thing that we did not, we did, we're not keeping track of as of, as of right now is manufacturing overhead. Again, the difficulty is in manufacturing overhead. How do we keep track of manufacturing overhead? Because as you saw, material was easy to keep track of, labor was easy to keep track of, because we can track that separately. But how do we keep track of 
depreciation, taxes, rent, utilities, insurance that are part of the production facilities and how do we allocate this to this job? Now, if we only have one job, it's easy. We allocate everything to that job because if that's the only thing that we are producing. But you know, in the real world, companies produce more than one product. They have more than one job. And especially in a job order cost thing, you, 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 could, you could have many individual product like Netflix will have many different movies that they are working on simultaneously. So let's talk about how do we determine manufacturing overhead so for manufacturing overhead we're going to first look we need to learn how to compute something called the predetermined overhead rate why do we need to compute this predetermined now from the word predetermined means we have to compute it up front it's the reason there are many reasons why we have to do that because it's first of all it's difficult to trace overhead for various jobs again and especially in a timely fashion in a timely fashion because we really don't know how much overhead something that's going to cost because we really don't get the bill until the end of the year so actual overhead is not known till the end of the period and sometime after the end of the period like you don't know your your, your utility bill bill until a month later so we cannot really wait until we determine what did we spend in overhead then allocate the overhead therefore we have to kind of estimate this is why it's called predetermined overhead rate also we have many different products so it makes it difficult to do so in a timely fashion so what we're, going to, what we're going to do, we're going to compute a predetermined overhead rate, use this predetermined overhead rate. This is one way to do it. We're going to see later on in, in different chapters and later on in the course that we, we could have multiple predetermined overhead rate. We can use a different method than the one that we are looking at now, but this is an introductory method. In many manufacturing overhead rate, the problem with it, um, many of them are fixed. Could They could be fixed, but the output fluctuates. Therefore, because they are fixed and the output fluctuate. So in busy time, the pre your cost is lower per unit and in not a busy time, your cost is not as high. Therefore, predetermined overhead rate kind of will even things out. How do, how do we compute the predetermined overhead rate? Well, you have to know the formula. I'm gonna go over the formula, what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. And please listen to me carefully. We're gonna use estimated, notice the word estimated. We don't know the number. So estimated versus actual. We don't use actual in this predetermined overhead rate. We use estimated because it's predetermined. Manufacturing overhead cost for the coming period. How do we do so? We look at last year. How much did we spend? Well, everything went up by 10%, by 5%. We make an estimate and we have this number, which is a dollar amount. Cost. In the denominator, we are going to estimate the total unit and the allocation base for the coming period. This is based on some type of allocation base, some type of a cost driver. So we have to determine what drives our cost. For, for most manufacturing facilities, two drivers could take place, either your direct labor hours or your machine hours, depending on how, if you are labor intensive or not labor intensive. If you are labor intensive manufacturing facilities, direct labor hours, what does that mean? It means the more direct labor hours you use, if you are labor intensive, the, the assumption is the more manufacturing overhead you should allocate to that particular job. If you don't have a lot of labor, you have more machine, you would use machine hours. Simply put, more machine hours your product is consuming, the more overhead you are going to allocate to that job. So this is the predetermined overhead rate, something that you need to know how to compute. Notice in both numerator and denominator you are using estimated now again how do they estimate the denominator they study the company sometime it's 50 direct labor hours 50 manufacturing overhead under those circumstances you might have two predetermined overhead rate so it doesn't have to be one but this is for the sake of understanding how the predetermined overhead rate is used and using only one is really simple and it's not really used in the real world Okay, we're going to see that there are other things that are used in the, in, the, in the real world. So the predetermined overhead rate is computing before the period begins using a four-step process. Let's go through this process again one more time. You have to estimate the overhead total amount of, allo of the allocation base, that's the denominator, that will be required for the next period estimated level of production. Again, this, depending on what you are using, it could be direct labor hours, it could be machine hours. Estimate, again, notice the word estimate. The total fixed manufacturing overhead cost, this is the numerator, okay, for the coming period and the variable manufacturing overhead cost per unit of the allocation base. Three, use the following equation to estimate the total amount of manufacturing overhead. And basically you should be familiar from the prior recording, the total 
cost of the manufacturing overhead, it's going to have two components. It's going to have a fixed component. Fixed A is the total estimated fixed manufacturing overhead cost plus a variable component because manufacturing overhead, some of it fixed, some of it variable. So the estimated, the estimated variable overhead per unit of the allocation and X is the total amount of allocation base, whether, whether allocation base you are using. And this is how you compute the predetermined overhead rate. And the best way to illustrate this is to actually work an example. Pirco estimated it will require 160,000 direct labor hour to meet the coming period estimated production level. Now, based on our formula, can we use this number for the predetermined overhead rate? Yes, it's estimated. Is this a numerator or the denominator? This is a denominator. This is a denominator. This is the activity. We are saying the activity is direct labor hour. We're going to be using 160 direct labor hours. The company estimated that the total fixed manufacturing overhead is 200,000. That's A, the total fixed manufacturing overhead. And the variable manufacturing overhead cost is 275 for each direct labor hour. Well, I know my fixed. How do I find out my variable? Well, I know what my variable, if I'm going with 160, direct labor hour and I am I, I am I'm assuming it's 275 per direct labor hour this is going to give me my variable manufacturing cost hopefully this makes sense so let's find the manufacture the total manufacturing overhead manufacturing cost we have 200,000 that's the fixed component plus 275 times 160 if we do this computation it's going to be 200 plus 440 so our overhead cost is 640,000. Remember, part of it fixed, part of it variable. 200,000 of it fixed, the remaining 440 is variable. Now we are ready to compute our predetermined overhead rate. We're going to take 640,000 divided by 160,000 hours. And I believe if I do this computation, so I'm going to take 640 divided by 160, and that's going to give me easy peasy number $5, oops, not five, $4 is my predetermined overhead rate. Now what's going to happen? We, I'm going to have to find out how much did I use? How many direct labor hours? Because direct labor hour is my driver. How many direct labor hours did I use on a particular job? Well, let's go back to our job. And for this wooden cargo crate, I used, if you remember, I used eight hours. You remember I send, I am skilled, that worker, and they spend eight hours. I'm going to take eight hours times four four dollar to predetermine overhead rate and it's going to be 32 dollars therefore i'm going to take the 32 dollars and put it here 32 dollars now let's assume that's the only thing the only thing i am going to i'm going to use for this job i am ready to compute my total cost what is my total cost for this one the, for these cargoes 116 of what 116 of material plus 120 of labor plus 32 of 32 of uh, overhead my total cost is 268 now if i ask you could you compute the unit product cost sure i can if i spend 268 and i i produce two of those within cargo which is unit completed two well half of that is 134 therefore my individual cost per cargo is 134 using the job costing or job order costing at the end of this recording i'm going to go ahead again and invite you to visit my website farhatlectures.com and encourage you to subscribe you need to invest in yourself you need to invest in your career you need to invest in your cpa you're going to pass your cpa once it's a lifetime investment take it seriously good luck study hard and remember i do have resources for other courses as well lectures multiple choice exercises that's going to help you succeed good luck study hard and most importantly stay safe